What is up, investors? And welcome back to the Everything Crypto Show. I'm your host, Everything Crypto, here to bring you the latest and most important news moving the crypto markets. Now, we are back today with another very important episode as we have some major updates on an upcoming Kronos airdrop, the Kronos metaverse news, as well as Crypto.com Exchange version 3.0, which is going to bring some very big upgrades to the platform. We also do need to talk about Quant as it continues to rip to the upside following the conclusion of CBOS 2022, and that event definitely left a lot for Quant holders to be excited for when it comes to the future of that project, and we're going to bring Break all of that down in today's video so without further ado it is time to sit back relax grab that morning cup of joe and enjoy the show happy friday everyone i hope all of you had an amazing work week and i'm wishing you all an amazing weekend ahead i just wanted to ask and if you've not yet hit that sub and like button please consider doing so and joining the everything crypto squad as the number one goal of this channel is to bring you all of the most important news that you need to know on a daily basis now with that out of the way, we are going to hop right in here with the question of the day. And today's question is, what do you think will be the biggest opportunity in hindsight that you are able to take advantage of during this bear market? Let me know in the YouTube comments down below. Now hopping into the charts like we always do, we're going to start off with Bitcoin here that did have a very volatile day yesterday by the standard of Bitcoin over this past year as it has really just been a snail. We have not seen a ton of big moves one way or the other on Bitcoin. Bitcoin. However, yesterday, the CPI data sent us moving to the downside from about 19,000 to 18.3K, and then we snapped right back up, and Bitcoin is currently sitting at 19.7K. However, this move to the upside is definitely not one that I would be too bullish on or excited for, because you're going to notice here if I zoom in that once again, we did get rejected at 20,000, which is obviously a key level of resistance and very important for market sentiment as it is the 2018 all-time high now additionally you can see that the 50 day moving average sits here at about 19.8k and since we did actually break below it on the 19th of august we have been rejected at this 50 day moving average once twice and now three times so if we cannot get back above 20,000 and the 50 day continues to creep downwards then i do believe it is only a matter of time before bitcoin does actually go ahead and retest that june low at 17.5k However, you guys know if you have been with the channel for a while that I do believe we are going to end Q4 higher. It is just a matter of actually getting some meaningful volume here on Bitcoin to make that move to the upside. Now, very similarly here to Ethereum, you're going to notice that the 50 day moving average is also lined up with its 2018 all time high in and around that $1,400 range. And if we actually take a look here on the weekly, you're going to notice that ETH is in a very tight range right now between its 200 week that is sitting at about $1,295 and that $1,400 key level. So ETH is coming up on a very big move one way or the other, in my opinion. If we break above $1,400, get above the 50 day, I think ETH is clear for a run back up to $1,730, which does represent upside of about 20% from that breakout. Now, likewise, if we actually break down here below the 200 week and close a candle below it i think that we come back down very close to the one thousand dollar range which pretty much is a move of 20 percent to the downside so both bitcoin and ethereum do for a very big move in the coming weeks in my opinion and speaking of big movers we are going to also break down the quant chart as i know a lot of you guys have been asking for my updated buy and sell targets on quant and it has seen a huge breakout on multiple technical indicators including its usd valuation its bitcoin valuation as well as its ethereum valuation and we're going to fill you guys in on everything we are looking for on this chart when we get to the quant segment of this video as we do also have to break down the news that has really sent this project ripping since those june lows now before we actually get into the quant news though we're going to talk about another one of my favorite altcoins on the channel and that is none other than chronos coin now, for starters here, you guys may have noticed that I did actually change my Twitter name from my unstoppable domain over to everything at crypto.cro, and this is my Kronos ID. So there has been a lot of people asking about this project and talking about it on Twitter, and I do kind of want to give you guys an update on what is going on with this project, as I do believe that we are due for an airdrop very, very soon. So for starters, what is Kronos ID here? This is a project incubated by Kronos Labs, which is the ecosystem 
system accelerator on the Kronos chain, and this is an identity and communications layer built on top of the Kronos blockchain that are that is aiming to be multi-chain eventually. So right now they have about three main services that you do need to know about, and the first one here is the domain service. So effectively, the same way that Ethereum name service replaces a long wallet address with a very simple human readable domain, that is exactly what Kronos ID is offering here. You can also create these domains to send and receive cryptocurrency, create subdomains for communities to use, or direct other users to bio and info via the domain name. So it is not just a wallet address, you can literally use it as a subdomain for a website or information hub. They also have their very own notification service going live soon. And I think this is going to be very big because it actually gives you the opportunity to connect to decentralized applications. So this can include things such as bids on your NFTs listed on Minted, risk of liquidation events if you are borrowing assets on Tectonic without having to log in and check these individual decentralized applications. I think this is a very big thing that DeFi is missing at the moment. And last but not least, Kronos ID messaging. So think like WhatsApp, but on a blockchain in true DeFi manner. And instead of it, instead of really being identified via your mobile phone number, you are now identified identified via your wallet address or domain name. So very interesting concept indeed. And the reason that we are talking about this now is because I believe that we were actually the first person to really dig into this project and the white paper when it did come out. And taking a look at the tokenomics, they did in fact update this page as of recently. So they have now officially confirmed that they will be launching their Kronos ID native token. And I do believe that this is going to be airdropped to members of the community that do have their very own Kronos ID. It effectively will be the governance token for this project. And the main thing to know here is that depending on how many Kronos IDs you have, that is going to impact how much of this Kronos ID token you are in fact airdropped. So just something to keep on your radar. If you are a user of the Kronos chain, if you do want to pick up a Kronos ID for ease of use purposes, it definitely could be advantageous to do this before the airdrop as then you will essentially be receiving a free token in return for having your very own Kronos ID. So I have been seeing a lot of buzz about this project on Twitter. I wanted to address this right off the bat because yes, I do in fact own a couple of domains and I am definitely looking forward to that airdrop whenever it does come out for users. Now, on some other Kronos news, we also need to talk about Kronos Play that is now available in the Unreal Engine Marketplace. And you can see here, they actually made a Medium article that pretty much walks you through step by step of how you can now plug in Kronos Play through the Unreal Engine Marketplace. And this is massive when it comes to Kronos Play. For those of you that don't know, the Unreal Engine and the Unity Engine are easily the two best gaming engines in the industry, both of which Kronos Chain is in fact interoperable with. That was very, very intentional on behalf of the Kronos team, in my opinion. And if we actually go over here to Kronos.org and then we go to the play section, you can see right here, Unity and Unreal, the two biggest names in the industry, hands down. Now, in less than a month since this listing has gone live, the plugin has already been downloaded more than 15,000 times by game developers. Kronos Play for the Unreal Engine supports multiple platforms, including Mac, Windows, Linux, Android, and iOS support will be available soon. Now, Ken Timzit, the managing director of Kronos Labs, says in a quote, following these 15,000 plus downloads, he says, I am looking forward to working on exciting collaborations between game studios, Kronos Chain, and Crypto.com product offerings such as Crypto.com Pay and the Crypto.com NFT platform. So I definitely think that 2023 is going to be a very big year for Kronos in terms of the Kronos verse that is being built out right now. And once again, we have Ken Timsit, the managing director of Kronos Labs, really highlighting that vertical integration between Crypto.com and what these game developers can do with their pay program, allowing you to probably pay for things in these respective blockchain games right from your Crypto.com app, as well as purchasing NFTs through the Crypto.com NFT platform or a Kronos NFT chain like Minted or Ibisu's Bay that is going to really just work together to create a very user-friendly experience 
and once again with the two best gaming industries in this whole industry i just don't see a way that chronos chain will not be very successful when it does come to their gaming prospects now speaking of gaming prospects i do want to talk about the crypto.com nft project itself in the form of the loaded lions and we did get one piece of news here in the last twitter space that i was not able to join but thankfully loadedlion.eth did in fact break down all the news that we do need to know and the biggest thing here for me is the fact that regarding the game, they are keeping it very secret and tight to the chest, but it is expected to release in late 2022 slash early 2023. And this gets me incredibly hyped for the future of the Kronos verse. The fact that they crypto.com themselves is going to be launching their very own metaverse game. This is not an outside developer they are working with. This is going to be a game that has crypto.com's brand name all over it. And I've Think that their team wants this to be an absolute banger so this is definitely a game that i am looking forward to i think it is going to bring a lot of attention to the chronos chain as well as the loaded lion nfts which once again there are only ten thousand of these babies and you guys may remember that crypto.com is seeking to have 100 million users by 2025 that means that these things are going to be very very scarce in the long run if they can really increase the demand for these nfts and i think that this metaverse game is going to be the first of many steps in doing so now we're going to get into the bitcoin and ethereum news here starting off with bitcoin as the total hash rate has once again just hit a new all-time high we have seen a little cool down here off that all-time high from 266 down to 262 but do keep in mind that just on the 28th of september so less than a month ago we were sitting at 223 so the hash rate has increased by like 20 percent in the past two and a half to three weeks and really it is just showing no sign of cooling down so while bitcoin has been in a bear market the total hash rate is absolutely ripped here from 143 one year ago now sitting at 262 and that just goes to show you the massive disconnect between the fundamentals and price right now happening with bitcoin if you were to take a look at the bitcoin chart here and then let's go ahead and put it on the one year and then we're going to go ahead and actually overlay the Bitcoin hash rate chart with the price action chart. And you're going to see that since the beginning of this bear market, they have pretty much moved in exact opposite directions. And that just goes to show you that even at a time when miners margins are getting crushed due to the lowered price of Bitcoin, the rising cost of energy, effectively putting their revenue back here at 2020 levels, these miners are still fighting at record breaking levels to validate the Bitcoin blockchain and that just goes to show you once again there is a massive disconnect right now between the price and the fundamentals miners are being forced to sell their bitcoin to continue operating and that is something we are here to take full advantage of throughout this bear market this big disconnect is not going to last forever and eventually price and fundamentals do meet up somewhere so even though the fundamentals for Bitcoin continue to get stronger and stronger with time, we have JP Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon here saying he will never buy Bitcoin. And he is a prime example of big money saying one thing and then doing another, okay? They do not want retail to know the power of crypto. They want to continue to have all of the power and all of these big opportunities for themselves while basically leaving retail at their whim. We know that JP Morgan has been making tons of moves when it comes to crypto, making their own blockchain, as well as the fact that they do own some critical Ethereum infrastructure here that we have discussed on the channel before they own a 10 percent stake in consensus who is the creator of both metamask and infura two very important pieces of ethereum infrastructure so how can you say that you are bearish on projects like bitcoin and he actually went as far as to call crypto as as a whole a decentralized ponzi scheme and you know why he said that because he wants to convince you that you need crypto to be centralized but really, JP Morgan, it's ironic because after their CEO came out here with a very bearish note on Bitcoin saying that he would basically never buy it, they pretty much proved not even two days later exactly why Bitcoin is necessary. As American rapper Kanye West has reportedly been kicked out of JP Morgan and his accounts will be closed. Here is the official statement from JP Morgan saying they are closing his accounts and they did not give any official reason. But all we know is this statement came out on October 12th. 
and they're asking him to have moved all of his funds by November 21st, so just over a month later, and this shows you exactly why Bitcoin is necessary, because your money is not yours. It is not safe with these banks. These banks want to convince you that your money is not safe in Bitcoin. I think that once you actually understand what Bitcoin is about and the ownership of Bitcoin, you understand that Bitcoin is much safer than these banks are. Bitcoin offers you true ownership, okay? Bitcoin is never going to kick you off its blockchain and tell you you have a month to pretty much up and move your funds somewhere else. That is what these banks do. That is the power they impose on you. And that is why they do not want a third party competitor like Bitcoin, like blockchain technology getting involved. That is exactly why they are trying to get their hands on as much Ethereum infrastructure as possible. As obviously, Ethereum is much easier to centralize than Bitcoin. And it literally is is a case of if you can't beat them, join them, the old world order being forced to adopt the new world order, not because they want to, because it is simply too powerful to ignore anymore. As a matter of fact, we know that JP Morgan is working on their own blockchain because we covered yesterday that Visa and JP Morgan have in fact combined their blockchain networks, B2B Connect and Link. So I've always been a firm believer that actions speak louder than words and JP Morgan's actions show you very clearly they are not bearish on crypto they are scared of crypto and that is why they put up that front so just something to keep in mind here do not let the big money scare you out of crypto they know this is the future and if you're selling your crypto you are most likely selling it to one of these big money players now hopping into the ethereum news here you're going to notice that it is still on a deflationary tear at the moment we have come down from minting 13,000 ETH as of October 8th post-merge to now having minted only 7,000 Ethereum. So we have effectively burned off over 6,000 ETH. About 40% of all Ethereum that would have been created post-merge has been burnt. And this is in the midst of a bear market where network activity has been decreased for the most part. I really think that once we are back in a bull run, once we do begin to see a lot of developers building out on Ethereum, that we are going to see the true deflationary power of this post-merge ETH. IP 1559 burn mechanism. And for those of you that don't understand the significance of this merge and its impact on tokenomics, I tweeted this yesterday. So with proof of work, issuance would have added 344,400 ETH to the supply. With proof of stake, issuance has added just 70,069 ETH to the supply. This was as of yesterday. So you can see here that we've burnt off just about 90 Ethereum since I even made this tweet last night. And that is a difference of 337.3 thousand Ethereum or $430 million in only 28 days. Let the bear market distract the masses. If you know, you know. And that is to say that once we are back in a bull run, once we do see a lot more volume and the gas fees begin to get higher on ETH once again, we see increased network activity. That is when I think Ethereum is really going to melt some faces and we want to be in Ethereum before that because it is going to be a very fast melt up. I think there's going to be a combination of a ton of FOMO as people first of all hop back into the markets and then begin to realize that as network activity increases, Ethereum becomes more and more scarce with time. So definitely something to keep in mind and it's definitely a very promising sign that does go up to show you that the Ethereum Foundation knew exactly what they were doing when they did actually draft up this merge idea. Now we're going to hop in here to the quant news and we're going to start off with the chart as quant has yet again seen another massive breakout. Okay. We've even broken out above this uptrending channel that we did, that we did draw here since the June lows. We even broke out on the upside of this uptrending channel, breaking above this 166 level of resistance. And we are now currently sitting at 167 after topping out at 175 just a couple of hours ago. So yesterday here, let's go to the five day because we actually saw a wild swing on quant all the way down. We came down here to 138 yesterday on the CPI data, and we then proceeded to rally about 20% in a 24 hour period up to this 167 level. If we zoom out here back to the June bottom, quant is now officially up 300% from those June lows. 
Now, let's also not just take a look at quant versus its USD valuation. Let's take a look at quant versus its Bitcoin valuation, where it is up just under 400% from those June lows. And then we're going to take a look at quant versus Ethereum. And once again, quant is up just under 400% versus Ethereum. So quant destroying pretty much everything here in terms of that valuation, that US dollar and Bitcoin and Ethereum, the two biggest blue chips in the industry. And I do expect this outperformance to continue moving forward, not only for like a year. I think that quant will easily be one of the strongest performers for the next couple of years until it finally claims its rightful spot in that top 10 cryptocurrencies by market cap. Now, what am I looking for on quant here on a shorter term basis? Well, for starters, we did actually get rejected at the upper line of this uptrending channel. So I am looking for a retest of 150. Now, if we retest 150 and bounce nicely, I think that eventually we are headed for that $200 level. There is pretty much no overhead resistance left on quant, no moving averages, no key levels of resistance here up until that $200 level. And then if we actually make a break below 150, the first level that I will be looking for is 130 as I did act as resistance here in late August and then it flipped to support in late September, early October and a break below 130. I think we come back down to 120 to 115 dollar range and that is actually where we would then run into the 50 day moving average which I would expect to act as support and that is where I personally would be looking to load a more substantial amount of quant and you guys know that we had been talking about quant on the channel back in May and June when we were back in that double digit territory and quant quickly grew from being a non-existent position in my portfolio to being my largest largest altcoin position by a substantial amount. I'm talking like a double the position in terms of capital allocation when compared to any other altcoin. And I do believe that the reason a lot more people have finally begun waking up to the power of quant is because of CBOS 2022. Now, this is an event that is run by Swift. It is one of the biggest financial events in the world. And quant was, in fact, a member of the CBOS 2022 event. They gained a lot of exposure as a very key theme that people continue to talk about when it came to the future of blockchain technology, of digitization, of CBDCs, is that inter interoperability factor so Siebel's has finally wrapped up here and I do have two very brief clips that I want to show you from Quant CEO Gilbert Verdian and I'm going to break down exactly why I think that this buying pressure will continue for Quant in the near and long-term future so here is clip number one banking and financial services are in the middle of a transformation I said 222 is top of mind they, they have to have that in uh, payments are changing, assets are changing to digital assets. And the second thing that's front of mind is blockchain. And we keep hearing it over and over again from vendors, from the banks itself, from central banks saying we want blockchain, we need digital assets, we what, need CBDCs, and we can help. And I think what we, we've kept hearing is the biggest challenge is interoperability. And they've said it time and time again. We want to implement it, but we need it to be interoperable. We don't know how to do it. We need the industry to solve it. And that's where we've come in. I mean, we've solved that problem since 2018. So there you have it. Quant CEO Gilbert Verdi and himself discussing how they're pretty much solving a key hindrance to the blockchain space right now. And that is interoperability. Okay. Quant separates itself from every other blockchain project because it is not a blockchain. It is a crypto that is essentially the connector of all blockchains. When you are betting on quant, you are not betting on one specific ecosystem. You are effectively betting on blockchain technology as a whole with the quant overledger being the key piece of tech that does connect all of these different ecosystems. Now, I'm going to show you one more clip from Gilbert Verdian, and then we're going to break down exactly what I am looking for from quant in the next couple of years. Yeah. So we're seeing a real evolution of where this is heading, which is exciting. And the key is interoperability and collaboration. It is, yeah, interoperability. Uh, what I want for next year is everyone to be very well aware and uh, know what we've done uh, and use it in the, within their institutions because, you know, we're not just shaping the tech, we're shaping the standards around it as well. well, we'll be back. 
So the key thing that he talks about there is not just shaping the tech, but also shaping the standards surrounding the tech. And I think specifically what he is referring to here is the ISO 222 standard that is going to be adopted by Swift technology in the very near future. I think this is exactly where Quant is headed over the next couple of years. I think centralization is going to play a very big role in the next bull run and that Quant is said to be a prime beneficiary of this. So ISO 222 protocol is a standard for electronic data interchange between financial financial services in the payment industry. ISO is based on distributive ledger technology such as the Quant Overledger and the XRP Ledger and banks worldwide have already committed to this worldwide regulatory framework which backs both SWIFT and the Fed Reserve. So this means that any third party that wants to interact with banks must be able to use the ISO 222 format. And with all of this information you can really begin to see the connections that Quant has been making here. We we have Quant being ISO compliant, we have Swift adopting ISO 222 standards, and then we have Quant at a big financial event that is in fact run by Swift, where Gilbert Verdiam, the CEO himself, did confirm that he has had lots of meetings with different potential customers. So lots of meeting with customers interested in the Quant Overledger at one of the biggest financial events of the year run by Swift. And once you really begin to understand all of these connections that Quant does have have behind the scenes, I think it is a lot easier to see why it is going to be a key player in the future of blockchain technology and the financial industry as a whole. Now, we're going to wrap this up talking about Crypto.com, who has announced the Gen 3.0 Crypto.com exchange. So effectively, this is said to be a massive upgrade to the Crypto.com exchange built for the evolving needs of traders from retail to institutional. Crypto.com says here that by giving this cutting edge technology nonstop, this is how they have grown their community to 50 million strong and how they are looking to provide value to the next 500 million clients. Step into the future with Gen 3.0 Crypto.com exchange where everything merges into one unified and seamless experience. Now, you guys may remember that a couple of days ago, if you did watch our video, we actually covered a leaked document. It was leaked on Twitter by someone by the name of David Bway, and he basically showcased that there were going to be some big upgrades coming to the Crypto.com exchange. And lo and behold, we now have the official document released. The next generation Crypto.com exchange awaits, and you can expect intuitive and smoother transfers and trading experiences, accessing their full range of products from one wallet, one click click margin and cross market collateral support, smart cross margin boosting capital efficiencies, margin savings and lowered requirements, flexible USD fiat deposits slash withdrawals and USD bundle trading pairs. And for me, this is the biggest one right here. So currently for the crypto.com exchange, you cannot upload USD to this exchange. It is only crypto, unlike the main app. So you have to actually move money to the main app and then buy USDC and then move that to the exchange for trading pairs. They are now allowing you to actually upload USD directly to the exchange. This is the biggest one, in my opinion, in terms of that adoption, as well as best in class performance and execution speed. The Gen 3.0 exchange is expected to go live in approximately three weeks and the transition into this upgrade will entail a downtime for approximately six to eight hours. They say here that they will reveal more information soon, so stay tuned. And I definitely think this is leading to a few different things. So number one, we did cover how they actually launched the Crypto.com exchange in the U.S. and in the early of blah, in the beginning of this year, but not for retail. It was only for institutional investors to test out. So I feel like they have now taken the feedback from these institutions. They have taken it into account and they are making the according changes to really make it a lot more friendly to both institutional investors and retail investors and this again is not to be confused with the main app this is crypto.com's version of coinbase of coinbase pro effectively and it is not yet available in the states i think that once it launches in the states which i do expect it to now actually be within q4 of this year or q1 of 2023 i think it is going to be incredibly bullish for crow moving forward 
and here is exactly why so what you can actually do through the crypto.com exchange is you can stake your crow for different trading rebates so if you stake your crow if you're staking 50,000 crow or more you are getting zero percent fees on your maker fees however if you are staking a hundred K crow or 500,000 crow you are getting a 0.01 to 0.02 basis point rebate so a one to two percent rebate on all trades instead of actually paying a fee on all of your trades for institutions that are trading millions of dollars it is definitely worth it for them to lock up that hundred thousand crow to save themselves those trading fee rebates and that means we are going to see big money locking up crow to get themselves some better rates through this exchange that is why this exchange is going to be very bullish for crow long term and i do believe that the wide scale launch of this exchange in the states is really going to accelerate that mass adoption for chronos so on that note i hope you guys did enjoy the content in today's video you know what to do if you made it all the way to the end let me know in the comments down below and you can claim that champion status i hope you all are having an amazing friday and i'm wishing you all an amazing weekend ahead and i hope to catch you in the next one peace out for now